another day, another wearable test. Today we're doing it on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, the sequel to the most popular folding phone of last year, the Z Flip 3. Now they're kind of marketing this at least a little bit towards like fashionable people that take photos and videos of themselves. So let's test this phone out and test that out a little bit at some more Instagrammable locations in downtown Manhattan. But first things first. And welcome to one of the most recognizable bridges in the world, the Brooklyn Bridge. It's the first fixed crossing of the East River connecting the cities then of Brooklyn and New York in 1883. Before that, you had to take a boat. It was actually the tallest structure in the Western Hemisphere for several years after it was completed, and now it's one of three bridges that connects Manhattan, the borough, and also the island, with Long Island, where the boroughs of Queens and Brooklyn are. There's also the Williamsburg Bridge and the Queensboro Bridge, but I'd say the Brooklyn Bridge probably gets all the attention. I mean, it's the only one built in like this neo-gothic style out of stone. And well, it's just pretty. And I actually just realized, because I haven't been here in a very long time, there used to be a bike path that was shared with the walking and it was just dangerous, frankly. It was very annoying and people were just screaming at each other all the time. They've now built an entire bike path that goes along with the cars. And it's just, it just seems so much smarter. Although that does mean that I had to park my bike away from here and walk, and now I'm a little nervous if it's gonna be there when I get back. Now, of course, because of how pretty this bridge is, it ends up on a lot of people's Instagrams. All right, while we're here though, let's talk about the styling of the Z Flip 4. And honestly, it's not changed very much. We have that same outside cover display that we'll get into a bit more later, but it is now covered in Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. So, you know, that means it's better because of the plus. We do also have a slimmer hinge and you can actually see the difference when you put the two of them side by side. And like I mentioned in my Z Fold 4 video, that slimmer hinge actually makes it feel like it folds a little flatter compared to last year's. It kind of still has like a tiny bend to it. We also have a matte finish now instead of a glossy one, which I like better personally. It also makes it slightly less slippery, but then they made the sides of the device glossy instead of matte, which I don't really get. Honestly, just give me matte all the things. Right? Now the hinge on the last model was pretty stiff and that allowed you to like position it in a bunch of different ways, which comes in handy. We'll talk about that later. But the Z Flip 4 hinge is actually even stiffer, which is again, an improvement, I think, considering the use cases you can do with the hinge. Now I will say though that that stiffer hinge on both of these models does make it a little hard to open it with one hand. Yeah, you can do it, but you gotta like get your finger in there and flick it out real hard and you know, risk throwing it across the room. Please still be there, please still be there. skeleton-like structure in photos on Instagram. This is called the Oculus, although really it's the main building of the World Trade Center Transportation Hub. Oculus sounds way cooler, obviously. Now it was designed by Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava, and probably its most distinct feature are these ribs that interlock inside as well as the spiked wings outside. There's definitely not another building in New York City that looks quite like this one. It fully opened in 2016, and it's significant in not only that it looks insane, but it actually connects the PATH train system, which is the train system from New Jersey, to the New York City subway system, making it the fifth busiest transportation hub in all of New York City. While we're here though, let's talk about the screens on the Z Flip 4. Now, as mentioned, that screen on the outside, the cover display as Samsung calls it, is identical to last year's model. It is a 1.9 inch Super AMOLED display. And that cover display, well, it kind of works like something else that Samsung makes. It reminds me of a smartwatch. You can double tap to wake it up and then swipe to the right 
to get to your notifications, which you can then tap on and interact with in some limited ways, similar to a smartwatch again. And you can also go to the right of the home screen on the cover display to get to your, what are essentially widgets. And there's a limited number of these, but they bring certain information to the display, like your calendar, weather, music controls, etc. And just like the watch, you can tap and hold on that home screen in order to customize it. You can pick from a variety of what are essentially watch faces. In fact, there's a lot of them in here that are the watch faces from the Galaxy Watch. You can also swipe down from the top to get to quick actions like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and other settings like that. Again, just like you do on the watch. And I don't know if it's because the cover display is very similar to my watch, and I happen to already own a smartwatch, that I just don't really use it very often. I think even if I didn't have a smartwatch, it is still a very limited use case. You can't do that much. But that doesn't really bother me that much because anytime I want to do anything on the phone, I just flick it open and, and kind of that's part of the fun. I want to flick it open and flick it closed because it can do that. So I don't know, it doesn't bother me to do so to get to what I need to do. And again, because of the cover display being as limited as it is, that doesn't really save me much time to not flip it open. And then we have the inside display, which is a 6.7 inch AMOLED 2X display, similar to last year, except that it has more of an adaptive refresh rate. So we can go all the way up to 120 hertz to have smoother animations for gaming or scrolling, etc., and drop itself down all the way to one hertz when you have something static on the screen, like say a photo, to save power. The display is also quite bright, and it's easy to see in the daylight outside, which is all I really care about. And apparently it's 45% stronger. No idea how they quantify that, but stronger is better. I'm sure. And it has the same IPX8 water resistance from last year. Yeah. It's a good Instagrammable day if you don't go to a fancy dinner and take photos of that too. I'm actually taking Dad out to dinner today. Hi, Dad. Hi there. <laughs> we are at arguably one of the most famous Korean American chefs restaurants here in New York City called Momofuku Sambar. And I've actually been to Sambar before, but at its original location in the East Village. This is where it's apparently moved to last year. And where we are is the South Street. Seafood, which I have to say, at least in the past, has always been a place that I would never tell anyone to like go eat at. It's always just kind of been like a tourist trap, really, that always has the same issue that most places over here do, and that's that tourists come once and eat and then never come back. So there's no need to really do a good job. You just have a constant stream of first-time customers with no idea of what they're in for. But over the last few years, it feels like the South Street Seaport is making a much bigger effort to try and bring in more established or more professional restaurants. And actually recently, Jean George, which is a famous chef and actually one of my favorite chefs, if I'm honest, just bought an entire building next door to the one that we're in now called the Tin Building with multiple nice restaurants in it, even multiple food counters, a coffee shop, and a ton of other stuff. It's not open yet, but soon. I will definitely check that out. So let's see if this restaurant lives up to its reputation. Very good. Okay, let's chat a bit about the Z Flip 4's party piece, the ability to fold, and what that actually means for you in real life. Now, firstly, of course, it means that the device can be small, and that means it can fit into your pocket easier, or your purse, or your wrist, whatever. It can fit in places easier because it bends in half. And that in and of itself is a feature and enough for some people to actually buy this device. But it also has flex mode, similar to the Z Fold 4. What that does is whenever you bend the device past a certain point, it automatically triggers a response in the UI. So with the camera, for example, it will automatically put the viewfinder up at the top half and then give you all of your controls on the bottom half. And of course, a lot of apps are not already programmed to do this. So Samsung actually added a way in the advanced settings in labs under flex mode, where you can manually tell specific apps to automatically move their content up to the top screen. Now, 
because the app isn't designed to do this, it doesn't have something to go on the bottom half. So instead, Samsung just kind of puts a generic placeholder in there and it has some features to it, like you can use it as a trackpad or some other stuff. You'll never use any of the things, to, to be honest, for the most part. All that matters is that it has moved the content up to the top half. Hi, Dad. Hi there. <laughs> I'm uh, glad we could meet on this video call over such a long distance. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great for video calls, especially, but also for just using it in that shape when you're maybe watching content or scrolling on social media. And also I've noticed something new in this version of the software. If you do bend the screen and it is about to invoke that flex mode and the app does not support it, you actually get a little button that pops up that you can tap. And that brings you to the settings in labs so that you can easily toggle the flex mode option for that specific app. Just saves you a little bit of time. And now, of course, the other thing that this folding ability allows you to do, especially on this device, is that it allows you to shut the phone with some vigor for a very satisfying close. Good meal, yeah? Oh, nice. So this is the New York Stock Exchange building. You've probably seen it in photos or maybe this girl here. Now, firstly, the building is the home of the New York Stock Exchange, the world's largest stock exchange by market capitalization of the companies listed on it. And it was built back in 1903. And that was actually replacing the original headquarters that were in this exact same spot that dated back to 1865. Now it takes up one city block basically between Broad Street and Wall Street. Wall Street, by the way, is called Wall Street because back when this was the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam in the 1600s, it was where the wall that surrounded that town was. And of course it wasn't a good enough wall to stop the British in 1664 when they conquered it and renamed it to New York. Now the girl is called Fearless Girl and she's a small bronze statue that was commissioned by an asset management company to promote a gender diverse index fund on the NASDAQ exchange. She was originally installed facing the Charging Bull statue around the block from here, but a year after being installed there, she was removed after the artist of the Charging Bull fought against it because he said that it changed the meaning of his statue and made it a villain. Now, she originally was supposed to be just a temporary thing anyway, but so many people signed a petition to keep her around that a year later, she was moved to her new home right here, kind of staring down the stock exchange. The idea being that she represents more gender diversity and more women on boards of large companies. While we're here though, let's talk about the cameras on the Z Flip 4. Now if you look at the spec sheet, it looks like the cameras are identical. For the most part they are, but there is a slight difference at least. The 12 megapixel main camera that we have is also f1.8 aperture, but the sensor itself is actually a little bit larger. So its pixels are 1.8 microns in size instead of 1.4. So that should mean better low light performance. But of course you can be the judge in this video. Now, other than that, we do have the exact same ultra wide camera. That's a 12 megapixel f 2.2 aperture. And we have the same 10 megapixel f 2.4 selfie camera. For video, we can shoot 4K 60 on all of the rear cameras and the front camera as well, which is nice. And that's kind of handy if you want to like turn that into half speed or so to get a little bit of slow motion. And besides that, we have some unique camera features because of the folding ability of the phone. So just like with the apps, you can do flex mode, which pulls things up to the top of the screen and makes it more useful in that like kind of standing position, which means that the phone itself, just like the Z Fold 4, is kind of its own built-in tripod. And so if you set a timer on the phone, you can actually take photos of yourself with it. I used it throughout this video to get the clips that you see on the phone. A lot of times I would just set it down, hit record and walk by it, for example. And again, the way that the phone is promoted, they kind of want you to use the video camera and the camera, especially the selfie ones, to record yourself or go live on Instagram or make a reel of you dancing around, that kind of stuff. And honestly, it actually is kind of a good use case for the form factor, which is interesting. Even though I feel like that was probably an accidental use case. I don't think Samsung planned that in the beginning, obviously. They 
couldn't have known maybe. But over time, they've probably have the data to realize that, well, there's a lot of people that are using it that way. And that's that's kind of cool. And lastly, for the little tricks that you can do on this phone, just like you can also do actually with the Z Fold 4, instead of using the selfie camera, you can use the much better rear cameras and tap this button at the top to have it show a preview on the cover display. Now this was something that also last year had, um, but now we can double tap on the cover display to have it zoom out and get the whole frame instead of just the cropped in little area that you usually get. Now, of course, that's a software feature as is kind of a lot of the other things with the cover display and knowing Samsung, a lot of that's probably gonna come to the Z Flip 3, even though they haven't explicitly said so. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding between the two. Don't use the software things to make that decision necessarily. Nothing will stop a dog from getting his ball. Getting dead his own bike now. An electric one. So we can ride over the bridge back home. Got it? Question. Yeah. Would you buy a folding phone? Yeah, I've already ordered mine. You did? Yeah. Wait, which one to get? The fold. Nice. Hey, right, I'll see you later. Get them safe. Okay, calling it a night. Now, firstly, the battery died when we were at dinner. So here is my screen of time, my usage for that. Again, as always, keep in mind that this is a real world test. So I use the camera a lot. I just, it was not a normal day for this phone. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these stats. But here is another day that was not a real world test day. So you have something to compare that to. Now overall, the battery life isn't great. I mean, last year's wasn't either. And that's just kind of, I think, comes with the territory right now of a phone this thin that folds. They just can't put that big of a battery in it. Now, they did put a 400 milliamp larger battery in this one than last year's. And I think that it does actually last longer than last year, so that's great. But is it a crazy good battery life phone? No, it's it's meh. They did at least give it faster charging, which I actually used to get a decent amount of battery while we were at the restaurant. I had the bartender plug it into the wall. And you can see how much we gained and how much time here. So that definitely helps. And again, it is definitely improved over last year, even if just by a bit. Now the question is, same as it is with the Z Fold 4 right now, is do you buy this new model? the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, or do you buy the Galaxy Z Flip 3? Because yes, they're very similar. There's not a lot of differences between the two, especially even more so on the flip versus the fold, which by the way, if you wanna check out my video on that, I'll leave a link to that below. But yeah, now that this one's out, the old one is gonna go down in price and probably get some good discounts. The only thing I would maybe suggest though is, well, look to see what the trade-in deals are, because there are a ton of them right now. It's actually what I think my dad just used to get his fold. They're doing the same kind of a thing for the flip. Some carriers are even giving it to you for free if you just turn in any phone, basically. I don't know how much longer that's gonna go for, but it, that's kind of crazy. And that makes it maybe worth just getting the new one and not bothering with last year's model, right? But regardless, I will leave the best prices that I could find on the Z Flip 4 and the Z Flip 3 in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video though. Let me know what you guys thought about the phone, also about this video, my weird little format vloggy type of thing that I do. Hope you guys like it. Please let me know. I think I might actually try to do like more of these, just like a, a faster cadence of them if you guys will watch them. So let me know, appreciate it. Also, if you did like this video, check out the rest of the series. Um, also subscribe, ding the bell so you get notified when I do new videos. Would greatly appreciate it. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. Governors, middle of the river. Helicopter, helicopter again. That device also comes in, nope. Motorcycle underneath me. Just screaming children. Only children do that. They just feel the need to scream at nothing.